Hello, and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to do a simple retro video game cross-stitch pattern. In your kit, you have a hoop, cross-stitching canvas, a needle, the color thread for the character that is in this kit, and the pattern. You may want to have a pencil handy if you want to make notes on your pattern. As I begin the tutorial, you have a choice on how you want to handle the canvas. You have either the hoop or you can use your hands. Personally, I like to use my hands, but for the purpose of this tutorial, we'll, we will use the hoop. So, we have a wooden hoop right here. We're going to unscrew it. It takes a while. Pop out the inner hoop from the outer hoop. We will place the canvas on top of the inner hoop and then place the outer hoop on top of that. And then we want to re-screw this. Always remember righty tidy lefty loosey unless you're me and you don't know what you're doing. There we go. So You want to get it tight enough that the canvas is not going to be moving and neither will be the inner hoop. Alright. Good. Okay. So, when you begin your stitching, take note of your pattern. You can begin either top or bottom, but you want to begin with one color first. Alright. So, I am going to start with the hat. I like to go top to bottom, especially with smaller patterns like this. All right. So we will need red. Please excuse all the thread I have here. It's very clustered. We will only need one piece of thread. So we're going to pull out one piece of thread. It will do this. Don't worry. As long as it's not going to knot will be fine. All right, so here's your needle. Here's your thread. You will want to wet your thread in order to get it through the eye of the needle. You can wet it with water, but if you just want to do that, oh, I thought I had it. It will take a few attempts. That's okay. It's all fine. There we go. All right, and then you want to do it about halfway and then bring both ends together and knot it. I like to do it a few times, three to four times, just so that it won't go through the canvas. Because if it goes through the canvas, I'm not going to make a pattern. Okay. Sorry, this is going to be upside down. We'll work with it. So as you begin your pattern, I like to count to see how many squares, as I call them, or X's I need to make. So it'll be, I like to count in two, so one, two, and then five. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five. I go two, four, and then five. So top row, five. And just pick a random place on your thing. Important note to be made. When you make your X's, always go in one way first. So I like to start bottom right to top left. To top right. Bottom left. And do that for every single stitch. That way it looks uniform and neat.
Nah. Our hat is dying. It's a very, very small hat. But Mario was a very small guy before he ate a mushroom and got big. Alright, so now we need to tie off our stitch. So, we're going to loop it around a couple times. I like to do three to four, like with my initial stitch. If I can get it. Is that like three? Let's do four. Alright. And then, yeah. Now we're going to use this later. Don't throw it away. Until we get to a point where it's going to be really hard to even make a loop with it. So, save it. And yay. How cool is that? We did our hat. Now, the next one is up to you. But let's go with the hair. Is this the one I chose? This is the one I chose. So, and you just keep doing that for all of your colors. All right, so let me see here. To begin my next stitch, I can start right under where I did this hat. All right, cool. So we're done with his little tiny like sideburn part of his hair. I am going to jump right over to his eyeball. I know it's two squares from that. And it is the fourth square from that. So it starts these two to this square. It's beautiful. Sure, it doesn't exactly match up, you know, completely, but it's good. So you know what I'm going to do next? I'm going to jump down to his shirt. Now you can stop here and finish off his face and go to the next color, but I, because I don't want to stop doing this color, I'm going to continue on. So it's one square down from his mustache. So. One square, two square, right here. Wait, where's this start? Oh, okay. Usually looking at a pattern upside down. As you can tell, I'm not exactly done here, so we'll mark where I am. Can't really tell with it, but this is where I'm at. So, sometimes you need to leave yourselves reminders of where you left off, because if it gets, if the thread is too short, you won't be able to do this, especially with the needle. And so what you'll end up having to do once I get this one, you'll end up having to cut the top thread here off the needle the other way and then wet it and then have to do this and it is very, 
Alright. You try doing that. It's not easy. And then you snip that off. And you go throw that away. And that's just how it is. So at the, they're at the corners, just go diagonally. So they'll be here and here. So just one square away from the last piece. All right. since we're going down. <laughs> it sticks to everything. You can go over there. Ta-da. Button and done. Yeah. All right. Buttons are done. I think now I'll probably do the on this very pasty skin. We'll do the skin. It's not as dark as it should be, but sometimes you just work with what you have and you make it work. You can't expect to get every single color right when it comes to a pattern. So you just have to pick with what you are existing for that. Let me say that again. When picking colors from a pattern, sometimes it's hard to find the matching type of thread. So you just do what you have already or what you can find in store. You can't get the color exactly right all the time.
did it. You made something. Hooray! All right. So that was fun. I didn't prick myself at all. But hey, did you have fun? I hope you did. Did you learn a new skill? I hope you did. If not, you stayed out of your parents' hair for a little bit. If you want to continue doing needlework like this, I suggest going to the website Farther's Resource. If you Google that, you'll find sprites that people have ripped from games and they have it out there for you to use. Now if you do it that way, you can save the picture, open it with MSM Paint, magnify it to the highest setting, which is 800%, and then go click on view and add the grid lines. And there you go. And that's how I do it. Or you can go on Google image search and do it. I mean, that way it's going to be a little bit harder because you will find pictures that are not exactly the most highest of quality. And so when you blow it up, it looks like it's bleeding into other pixels and it's very blurry and won't produce the greatest results. Another tip I have is to use two pieces of thread. And so of one piece, we use one piece today because our needle that you will get in your kit will not be able to handle two threads through the eye of the needle. It's too small. But if you have a needle that has a much bigger opening, you can put in two pieces of thread like I typically use, and you'll have a much fuller looking cross stitch. But for this purpose, just one thread, since some of you will be beginners, I just want to take this moment to say thank you for joining me on this cross stitching journey. I hope you learned something new and that you had fun and maybe you'll keep doing it.